Having found your best vision sphere, the next stage of the refraction technique is to determine the astigmatic component of the refractive error. The Jackson cross sill technique is the most common procedure for determining this. So the first stage of this procedure is to leave the pre-presbyopic patient slightly over minus. Here we have a patient who is equally clear on the red and the green. I will offer a minus 025 and ask the patient how the clarity changes. So do the circles look sharper on the red or the green? On the green. So this is the response we wanted. So we take out our minus 150 and add our minus 175. So now the patient is slightly over minus. We can begin the Jackson cross sill technique. Patient views a circular target, and this is called the Verhoff ring. Patient is asked to look at the clarity of the circle. Tell me when the circle appears rounder and darker to you. So when does it look the sharpest? So does the circle appear more rounder and darker in lens one or two? Two. Two. And what we are noticing is, is when does the patient say the clarity is best, and the patient has said that two is the best. And here we're looking for where the minus axis is situated. So the minus axis in this case is along the 180. So we'll just do that one more time. So looking at the circles, are the circles clearer in one or two? Two. So in two, the axis is 180. So make a mental note that the patient had a preference with the minus axis at 180. Now we'll hold the cross sill such that the handle is horizontal and the two axes are running 45 and 135 degrees. And again, we ask the same question. Are the circles clearer in lens one or two? Two. And the patient has a preference for two and they like it at the 135 position. So currently the patient has a preference at 180 and 135. So the cylindrical lens is placed at the midway point between the 180 and 135, okay, which is 157.5. So we'll put it at 157 as a starting point. The next stage is to refine the axis. To do this, the handle is held parallel with the axis of the trial sill. We'll ask the patient again of, of the clarity of the circle. So do the circles appear sharper, more rounder and darker in lens one or two? Two. two. Okay, so first of all, move the axis in big steps of about 15 to 20 degrees to localize where the axis of the astigmatism is. Three or four? Four. When the clarity is equal, the axis has been found. With the Jackson cross sill, what's happening is that we're manipulating the distance of the two focal lines relative to the retina. So we're not moving the circle least confusion, we're just manipulating those two lines and the closer those two lines get, the smaller the circle least confusion and hence the better the focus. So in this case, we've got a minus 050 at 180 anterior focal line and here we've got plus 050 times 90 posterior focal line. We hold the cross sill in this position with the minus running horizontally and the positive running vertically. By applying the minus at the 180, we're pushing this anterior focal line back towards the retina. And by applying the plus 025 to the posterior focal line, we're bringing it closer to the retina. So we're improving the vision because that circle least confusion has got smaller because the gap between the two lines has got smaller. If we then flip the cross sill, we've got the opposite scenario where we're now applying plus 025 along the 180. So what we've done is we've moved our minus 050, 180 forwards by plus 025. So we've moved it more anteriorly and we've got now a minus 075, 180. And then that posterior focal line is moved even further back because now we've got that minus 025 running vertically. So that's moved to plus 075. So that's actually increased the distance between the two focal lines which has essentially made the astigmatism worse. So the patient, when cho shown the two options, prefers option one rather than option two. When we hold the cross sill now in the 45 and 135 degree meridians, 
all that happens is that the orientation of the focal line changes and the lines become closer to the retina or further apart depending on which option is being shown. So in this case we've got the minus 025 running at 135 and we've got the plus running at 45. And so we've got this residual refractive error resulting in the anterior focal line moving closer to the retina but at a new axis because of the cross seal being held at 135. So it's off axis so you get this uh, resultant axis uh, being formed and so the anterior focal line has moved closer to the retina and the posterior focal line has moved closer to the retina. So again in this option the two lines have got closer so the patient will see that as clearer than the option previously. So when you flip the Jackson cross cell you'll now have the plus 025 in the 135 meridian and the minus 025 in the 45 degree meridian and this will move those focal lines apart again, but again you get this residual uh, change in axis and the sill will look quite similar to the previous option, but they might have a preference between the two depending on which axis appears the sharpest. They should see that as equally blurry or equally clear, so they won't have a preference, they'll prefer the options before basically, because that optically, that has given the best vision in terms of bringing those two lines closest to the retina and reducing the size of that circle of confusion. So the next stage is to determine the power of the sill. And to do this, we're holding the axis of the Jackson cross sill parallel with the axis of the trial lens. So for every 050 change in cylindrical power, we need to change the sphere by 025. And this is all to ensure that the circle least confusion is retained on the retina. When making the cylindrical power more minus, we need to change the sphere to become more positive, more plus. When changing the cylindrical power to becoming more positive, we need to change the sphere to becoming more negative. So looking at the circle, are the circles more rounder and darker in lens 1 or lens 2? 1. Lens 1. Okay, so the patient prefers more minus. So we have now gone from 0 diopters of sill to minus 050 sill. But to compensate for this increased cylindrical power, in terms of the circle least confusion still being retained on the retina, we need to bring the spherical power down by 025. So we're going from minus 175 to minus 150. So looking at the circles, do the circles appear more rounder and darker in lens 1 or 2, or about the same? Both about the same. So this suggests that we've found the correct cylindrical power, but at this point it's also useful to just double check that the correct axis has been found. Looking at the circles again, holding the handle parallel with the trial sill axis, do the circles appear rounder and darker in lens one or two, or about the same? About the same. Okay. Getting the about the same response for both power and axis suggests that the correct cylindrical power and axis has been found. So the next step would be then to verify the sphere component again and to just check that the patient is still balanced on the red and the green. And now looking at the circles on the red and the green, are the circles sharper on the red or the green or about the same? About the same. And again, looking at the circles, are they clear on the red or the green or about the same? On the red. Lovely. And if I hold this up, clear on the red or the green or about the same? On the green. Lovely. And this confirms for us that the circle is confusion and the focal point is now on the retina. Um, and by putting the plus 025, we are overplusing the patient. By holding up the minus 025, we're under over minusing the patient. So the final stage is to now go back to the letter chart. So looking at the chart, what's the smallest sign of letters? You can read there, please. E D B F N. Brilliant. Okay. And can you read any more at all on the next line? No. No. Okay. And it's also worth just double checking the the sphere here as well, just to make sure that we haven't over minus the patient. Uh, and again, looking at that letter F, is the letter F clearer with this lens or without, or just without. the same? Without is best, okay? So that's, that's just double checking for us that the patient hasn't been uh, over minus, and just check the minus as well. Again, looking at the F, is it clearer with this lens or without, or just smaller and blacker? Just smaller and blacker. 
brilliant. Okay, and this really uh, confirms for us that the optimal focus is on the retina and we haven't over minus the patient. And one last test that's always worth doing is the plus one blur test. So by putting in the plus one blur test, the patient should blur by about four lines. The plus one blur test is a useful check test to ensure that the refractive error is not over minus. And we'll get the patient to look at the chart and what's the smallest line of letters you can read now? F U V M H. Lovely. Anything else on the next line? No. So the patient is reading the 612 line. That suggests to us that the Rx found is maximum plus, least minor. So the plus one blur test is a check test done right at the end of the refraction uh, procedure to ensure that we haven't over minus the patient. So when we put in the plus one, it should blur the patient down by about four to five lines. And this really shows us that the, the focus that we had following our full refraction is on the retina and we haven't uh, left them in a, in a sort of, over, we haven't over minus them.